You ever watch an anime and see something that makes you think, that's definitely a life lesson. Well, today I'm going to break down five of those moments that remind me of messages that were taught from the Bible. Hey, what's up? It's me, Mini Mosey, and welcome to Finding God in Anime. Today we're heading to Arlong Park, specifically the scene that's responsible for turning One Piece into one of my islands of personality. Arlong! 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 A bit of a disclaimer in this video i'll be saying that some characters are like god or like jesus i'm not saying that they are them i'm saying that their actions remind me of them within the context of the show is something else entirely but in this video i'm just making comparisons please don't worship luffy it's not a good idea number one luffy does not care about the past there is a part in this arc when Nojiko tried to tell Luffy about how despite what Arlong did to Belmare and the town, Nami chose to join his crew in, in, in an attempt to save everyone. Not knowing what Nojiko was about to say, good or bad, Luffy wasn't even interested and it's this disinterest that reminds me of this Bible verse. Romans 8.1 There is therefore now no condemnation in him who is in Christ Jesus. In this moment, Nami represents you, Luffy represents God, and Nojiko represents all of your past actions, um, your sins, your transgressions, and all of that stuff. Nojiko is trying to tell Luffy about Nami's past and why he should just leave her alone and go away. And in this metaphor, it would actually flip-flop a little bit with your past actions telling you, rolling around in your mind, saying that you should stay away from God, you're not worthy, um, anything like that. Either way, in this comparison, Nojiko serves as a device to keep Nami and Luffy apart, i.e. you and God apart. The Bible states that God does not care about your past once you choose to follow him, just your future. In this case with Luffy, he already considers Nami to be part of his crew. Uh, therefore, he does not care about her past actions. He does not care that he she seems to betray her whole entire town. He just cares about the future in which she will spend her days as the navigator on his crew. The second lesson is about Nami's burden. Nami tried in her own strength to solve her problems and to get herself and her town out of the Arlong situation, but she only ended up hurting herself. This whole entire arc hangs off of Nami's suffering. She's striving to solve this Arlong Park problem by herself because that's what she's done her whole entire life. Nami was a bad little girl. Open the dictionary to bad little girl. There is a picture of Nami right there. She stole, uh, she fought with her mom and her sister. She said the magic words, we're not a real family. She ran away. And when Belmare got killed by Arlong, she dug deep and asked herself, what can I do to fix this so that they don't kill my whole entire village? So Nami joins Arlong's crew. Um, she starts stealing after he makes a deal with her, saying she needs an X amount of berries. After spending eight years trying to prevent this very thing, the village ends up going off to fight Arlong on their own, and Nami is helpless to stop it. That was the town basically snatching her burden away from her. She'd been carrying that weight on her own for so long she didn't realize how heavy it was until it all collapsed on her. The Bible verse that this reminds me of is Peter 5-7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Sometimes when we try to do things on our own, we struggle and fail and strive and nothing seems to be working. But when we accept God and give our struggles to him, then we are able to accomplish what we couldn't achieve on our own. Nami's cry for help mirrors the moment when we, burdened by our struggles, can finally turn to God. Third lesson is about Nami's surrender. It's the same moment, but we're looking at it from Luffy's perspective now. Um, when Luffy sees Nami's desperation and her tears when she's just in the sand, in the dirt, just crying, he responds not with anger, not with frustration, but with compassion. Because think about it, Luffy has beaten about five big bads at this point. 
Um, and Nami has seen him beat no less than two with her own eyes. The idea that she wouldn't even consider asking him, not only that, but push him away, that, that would make anyone upset. Like Luffy must be thinking to himself, if I do one thing, then beating people up is what I do. And you don't think I care enough about you to help you. But instead of getting mad and yelling at Nami or saying screw it and beating up Arlong anyway, Luffy does something that is extremely emotionally intelligent and it reflects a maturity that you wouldn't expect from a 17 year old rubber man who likes to fight and eat. Luffy waits for Nami to ask for help, understanding the depth of her pain and also respecting her autonomy. The Bible verse for this one is, I actually have two, um, but the first one is Psalm 103.8. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Luffy's compassion reflects the compassionate heart of Christ who sees our pain and is always ready to help, but also respects our free will and waits for us to turn to him in our time of need. I'm not saying that if you're not a Christian, then that's why you have anxiety. I'm also not saying that if you are a Christian, God's going to solve all of your problems. That's not true at all. What I am saying is that when you do give your problems to God, he might solve them or you might be sitting in it for a minute. In that time, God can give you peace that passes all understanding. He can give you grace to do with ease what others may struggle to do. Um, he can give you wisdom in the situation. He can give you guidance. But the point is that he will be with you. The second verse I found for this section is Isaiah 41, 11 through 13. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who rage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Luffy. lesson comes from the moment when Luffy destroys Arlong's map room or Nami's map room whoever you want to give ownership of it to um, but Luffy's destruction of Arlong's map room is symbolic of the breaking of chains that held Nami in bondage both physically and emotionally this act sets Nami free from her past I absolutely love this scene because Luffy didn't just beat Arlong he destroyed the whole entire building the location in which Nami was abused and exploited does not exist anymore. It is gone. I get chills every single time I watch it because as soon as Luffy realizes that that was Nami's map room where she was forced to draw maps day and night, he gets pissed and starts throwing stuff out of there and you can see all the papers floating through the air. And at the very end, Luffy is standing on top of all of the rubble and he yells, Nami, you're my friend. That's about as mad as he gets at Nami. Like he's saying, if you didn't understand before, you better understand now. I am here for you. I will help you no matter what you get into because this is what I do for my friends. This scene reflects how Christ breaks the chains of sin and oppression in our lives. He absolutely frees us. Just as Luffy destroys the room that symbolizes Nami's chains, Jesus breaks the chains of sin that bind us. That's not something that he will do for us. That's something that he already did. The verse for this section is Galatians 5.1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Nami is not going to be burdened again by slavery to the fishmen. She is absolutely free. And Luffy been freeing people this whole entire series. And I just love it for that. The last lesson is about Nami and her new tattoo. So Nami's tattoo was once a symbol of her bondage to Arlong, a member of the Arlong Pirates. It now is a symbol of freedom and new life after his defeat when she covers it 
with the tangerine and pinwheel tattoo that represents her love for Belmare, Zinzo, and her whole entire village. And I am just now thinking, I haven't thought of Nami's tattoo nearly enough. It's the same situation, spoilers for Fishman Island, spoilers for Fishman Island. If you have not watched Fishman Island, please skip this portion until the timestamp below. But it's the same situation as the hoof of the celestial dragon and how the sun pirates covered it up. And it's also similar to the situation with Laboon in which Luffy paints over his scars with the janky um, straw hat logo. Um, but it is a sort of rebirth that not only is the old gone, but the new is here. Um, and that is important because if you only get rid of the old scars, there's a vacancy. It's like the scar is gone, but there's nothing left in its place except for the remembrance of the scar. So is it like even really gone? Not, no, not really. Uh, but when something is dead and it is reborn, the focus now goes to being the new thing. The Bible verse for this section comes from 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. This transformation of Nami's tattoo um, represents a sort of redemption because what was once a mark of sin and shame now represents grace and freedom um, and her new life. In conclusion, for me, Arlong Park was one big story about how someone can surrender their life and become redeemed, and also an illustration of God's compassion, patience, and love for his children. Um, and if you've ever wondered or hoped that you had a Luffy, your own personal Luffy, who can go and fight for you, let me just tell you that you have something better. You have a Heavenly Father who knows you from the inside and out because He created you. He has a plan and a hope for your future and His goodness is running after you if you would just accept it, just like Nami did with Luffy. But anyway, that's all I've got. If you got this far in the video, put a little um, little nerd emoji in the comments, the one with like the little glasses and the buck teeth, just so I know that you got this far and it helps out the algorithm um, and pushes this video out to more people. But if you liked this video, you will love, you will absolutely love my One Piece series that is right here. You can watch it. Go binge it. Go put on some laundry. Fold your laundry. I don't know. Do some chores. I talk slow, so it's not like you're going to miss too much if you're doing something else while you watch it. I won't be mad. But yeah, anyway, I've been Meanie Mosey, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.